Hello, and welcome to My Point of View Movie Reviews. Now, today's review is another retro joint, Lethal Weapon 2. This movie blew my mind the summer of 1989. That same summer you had Ghostbusters 2, you had Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It was a great summer. It was special to me because that summer, my family and I migrated from LA all the way to Washington, D.C. for a week and a half for our family reunion on my mom's side of the family. And I'll never forget that family reunion. It was absolutely fantastic. But my uncle, Daniel, and my auntie, Pat, took me and one of my cousins from Virginia to the movies to go see Lethal Weapon 2. And you gotta remember, we were young. Um, it was rated R, it had nudity and everything, but my uncle was cool, man, he was really cool. So we, he took us to see me and my cousin to go see Lethal Weapon 2, along with my auntie. And man, from the opening scene, the minute the logo came down, Warner Brothers, you hear that little music, dun, 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 no, Looney Tunes with Bugs Bunny, boom, the movie starts. You have Riggs punching the top of the car from inside, chasing after this perk along with Murtock. And this chases all through the streets of LA, and they finally catch up to the guy, he escapes, but the trunk is full with gold from South Africa. Cougar Ranch, right? So the whole plot of this movie, you have the South African government, the small 10%, this is during a time of, of apartheid. What they were doing, they were using their diplomatic immunity to smuggle in gold to the United States. So that was the whole plot of this movie. And there was a little twist in this movie because one of the, the main villain's henchmen has some ties to Riggs from four years previous, dating back to the last movie and a little bit before. Really, really, really twisted stuff. This movie, man, again, it's my favorite. The chemistry is on point. Riggs is totally nuts in this movie. The things he does, again, he's chasing cars on fire foot on the damn freeway it is <laughs> it is crazy Murtaugh again is talking about retiring he's like six days away from retiring or something like that or was that the last movie I'm trying to think I forgot in every movie he's trying to retire I forget sometimes but man but this is the one time where they mess up so bad they get knocked down to crap duty go protect this guy who's an informant Joe Pesci, yes, the introduction of Leo Getz, and man, how they met, he was staying in a hotel, somebody tried to make a hit on him, Riggs grabs him, jumps out the window, pushes the perk, and Joe Pesci out the window, F stories going way down into a pool of water, it was a breathtaking scene, but slowly but surely, He's t teaching them game of how the criminal underground works. And they become really, really good friends. And Joe Pesci is a beloved character in the Lethal franchise. And this is the movie that started it all. But yeah, uh, my favorite villain easily throughout the whole franchise. Whenever one of his henchmen messed up, what he would do, he invites you upstairs to his office and he would have plastic laying on the floor. He would tell the people, oh, don't worry about the plastic. It's for painting purposes, I'm painting my office. And if you lost money, especially a million dollars worth of gold, shot right in the head, you land on the plastic, they wrap your ass up and take you out to the dumpster. This dude was cold-blooded. And a cold thing about being diplomatic immunity, the law enforcement cannot touch them. They are above the law. So basically, Riggs, Murtaugh throwing their badges, and they go deep, deep undercover and go after this guy. Riggs is torturing him at street lights, at his compound. Everywhere he goes, Riggs was there. He goes to work, Riggs is right there with a picket sign talking about free Africa, you know, free South Africa. It was a great, great, great movie. And Riggs was really focused, man. He really wanted revenge on this dude. And this young lady who worked for the villain she was an innocent bystander. She kind of knew some things were going on, but he knew everything, but what was going on. There happened to be his love interest in this movie, and she was a 
gorgeous specimen of a woman. Ah, God damn, she was fine. But in this movie, once Riggs is giving them the hard time, they start picking off the NP, uh, the LAPD one by one and his, and his um, crew. He blows them up. That was his MO. They blew people up. One lady was going swimming in the backyard. Pow! Blew her up. There was a poker game which Murtaugh was supposed to be at. Blew them all to the smithereens. One guy was hanging upside down doing exercise. They shot him dead point in his head. This movie was ruthless. They tried to kill Murtaugh at his home, but he got away with a nail gun. He was jacking people up. But now, they kidnap Joe Pesci. And they're torturing him, trying to get information. So Riggs and Murtaugh have to go save him because they feel it's their fault why he got kidnapped in the first place. And this is where the movie gets real dark. But before that, there's a scene that tried to kill Murtaugh earlier in his home by putting a bomb on his toilet. The man goes to number two, he checks the toilet paper and says, boom, you're dead. Gotta call in the bomb squad, right? One of the most famous scenes in all Lethal Weapon history. This is where the number one, two, three comes from. You know, because he needed help from Riggs to pull him off the toilet into the tub from the bomb explosion because his legs were dead. They were numb. They were gone. He'd been sitting for at least 24 hours. But it's a very funny scene, very climatic scene, very emotional scene because for the first time, Riggs and Murtaugh realize that they love each other, they'll do anything for each other and die for each other. That part gets me every time I see it. They don't say it, but Murtaugh's like, hey man, he's like, I know Raj, I know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna die, you're not gonna die. He saves his life, the toilet goes off in the air, lands on a police car, you still see Boo Boo inside the commode. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. But that part right there, is why the franchise of what it is, the relationship between those two cops. And now, there's some great chase scenes around a mountain involving a surfboard going through somebody's face. It's some great stunts in this movie. I love this movie. And the end, the climactic end was dope. Riggs got, hit, got to do what he wanted to do. Murtaugh got to do what he wanted to do. They killed these bad guys and fashionable, fashionable way, man. It was a great film. Um, during the closing credits, there's a song playing, and it's a great song, man. That was like the last of the 80s great songs. Great song to close out the movie. This movie is great from beginning to end. Action packed, the comedy is there, the camaraderie is there. And um, yes, once again, the Murtox homes get jacked up. Uh, <laughs> Second story bathroom gets blown to bits. Toilet comes flying out the window into a cop car in the middle of the street. The house again gets wrecked in the Lethal Weapon movie. But have you seen Lethal Weapon 2? If you haven't seen it in a while, give it a revisit. I'm telling you, great cinema, great time. One of the best buddy cop movies of all time. So be sure to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, and more importantly, leave your comments down low and i'm out as as always yo it's just my point of view oh yeah one extra little tidbit this is the first film in the franchise that introduces the dislocated shoulder he's in the office taking an office pool that he can escape out of a straight jacket right <laughs> Everybody's betting money. He can't do it within five minutes. Well, Riggs dislocated his shoulder on his own, comes out of the straitjacket, and gets paid, gets all of his money. And he does it again later on in the film to save his life when he's drowning. But this is the movie that introduces the famous dislocation of the shoulder. From this movie, it was in every other subsequent film from then on. Just a little tidbit. Until next time. Peace. Hello. Now, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Without you, there's no me. And do us a favor. Stop by the website at www.blacktastic.net and pick up some merchandise. Get yourself a hat or pick up a t-shirt. 
It's things like that that help keep the channel going. And also, feel free to leave a donation on the home page at www.blacktastic.net. Thank you all so much. Again, you make this so much fun. Without you, there's no me. Until next time, see you later.